weekly mental health program on TV for one or eight weeks in the from the year 1995 to 1997. He has presented papers on drama therapy and conducted workshops on drama therapy and art therapy in various colleges and institutions in India and abroad. He is a regular columnist in English and Tamil in print media. We very warmly welcome you, sir. All the participants can put your questions in the chat box during the session or at the end of the session please refrain from sending personal and unrelated messages thank you there will be a lot of pitches and i hope you would be able to accommodate them and uh, handle it along with them. drama therapy is one of my most passionate subjects and uh, i've been involved in it from 1986 so before we get into the actual session, let us understand what drama and therapy would mean to someone who's just encountering those words in the very beginning. Drama, according to dictionaries, is a play for acting on stage, radio, etc. It is also supposed to mean a dramatic quality or a series of events. It is also dramatic art, composition, and presentation of plays, but we would be concerned with the dramatic quality of a series of events, either individually or in a group. Therapy is always remedial treatment. It can be a treatment for body functions, dysfunctions, mental and social disorders, or disruptions. Now, a lot of people would generally ask me at the end of uh, my sessions, who can do drama therapy. To get into a drama therapy session, along with a trained drama therapist, you don't have to have much of a background. You can be assisting, aiding, and actively participating in it. But for you to conduct a session on your own, you must have a strong background in psychology. Because all the psychological aspects and dimensions must be understood and there must be a spontaneity in adjusting to the various uh, dynamics which would involve in the course of a session. So a grounding in psychology is necessary and an experience in theatre is also essential. Psychology is needed not just as a correspondence course or an uh, online course. You need hands-on experience in dealing with people and handling them personally. Theatrical experience would help you to be more spontaneous and adapt to situations that emerge suddenly during a session. And you must your uh, theater experience would also make you comfortable in uh, teaching the exercises and making them more comfortable and understanding which exercise would suit which particular individual in the group. Now, I have a theater background and this it's just a slide which shows a few of the pictures from a few of my plays. Yeah, it's not as important uh, as the other slides. It is just a little trumpet I have and I always blow it whenever I get a chance. And I have been conducting a drama therapy workshop since 1987. But this is not going to be a workshop like that because we cannot have an exercise session. It would be more of me talking and you listening and perhaps uh, discussing over a question and answer session in the end. So let's get into the actual presentation. Drama is a Greek word. It came from a Greek word. It means a thing done. It, is, it means actually doing, acting. Theatre and drama, a lot of people mistake to be synonyms. It is not. Drama is a personal experience in a group. Theatre is a way of communicating that experience to others. I am talking to you right now because the screen is full of uh, a slide. I'm not able to see the expressions uh, in the sidebar of some people. Some of them would be bored. Some of them would be irritated. Some of them would even be scratching their head or slapping their face as I talk. And I would be reacting to it if I were to see them in person. This is a drama that is constantly happening in every situation in our life. When you go to a hotel and order something, when you try to get into the cab and have an argument with the driver, or 
when you read a book also there is drama because you get into the character and the situation and experience it for some time this is all personal drama is personal theater is communicating your experience to others it is always with another person generally with a group of persons so theater is necessary for you to reach out into a wider not a one to one situation which most of us would be dramatic or non dramatic in everyday life so drama therapy is a specific program by which the participants would understand to overcome their psychological or social problems they may or may not have physical disabilities contributing to the problem it's like a person having cancer and depression you can't just uh, sit with the patient and say look boss you are having cancer it's okay you must learn to be positive you must be able to fight back you must uh, develop inner strength and all those things such things won't work the pain is real the suffering is real the looming death is scary no amount of talking to that person would help and i'm not saying drama therapy can be used for such terminal ill patients but unless you understand the other problems the person is facing you will not be able to just counsel a person and get things done in drama therapy it's different because it's a group therapy in which the selection of the group would be easily uh, monitored and adjusted drama therapy may be used as a clinical tool because it's remedial uh, it's a treatment process and a clinical tool is not only a treatment process it is also a diagnostic uh, instrument uh, when you see people uh, expressing a certain uh, way of uh, handling things the body language the verbal expression the facial expression you would understand how much the person is affected by any given uh, hypothetical situation as in a drama therapy session we go into the sessions a little later drama in drama therapy the means are the techniques of theater it's based on the theories of theater but the goal is not a theatrical production you don't do drama therapy with a group with the idea of producing a play for a general audience it is more to enhance the personal awareness and effectiveness of the individual so a working definition of drama therapy would be it is a process in which the individual uses the principles and techniques of drama and theater for modifying improving correcting or learning behavior this way a social interaction would become better more productive and more peaceful and it is not something which started for the past 50 60 years it has been there for ages so a little bit of history may be relevant at this juncture uh, there must have been drama therapy activities even before the greek civilization but we do not have uh, proper records of them only from the greece we get what happened in the theater of epidaurus the great epidaurus theater also had a temple for aesculapius aesculapius was the god of peace and in the temple those people who were having uh, psychological or physical problems were made to stay for a few days and the course of treatment involved watching listening to music participating in dance and watching drama and finally a discussion with the philosopher so that they understand their self and their problems in a better way this was a early very early psychotherapeutic eclectic exercise and in this picture aesculapius the god of medicine according to greeks is having his rod and the snake is entwined over it now this is the original actual medical symbol uh, this single snake has been substituted with two snakes and the rod has developed wings and that has become a more popular medical symbol now 
the medical symbol we commonly see with the wings and two snakes entwined is considered to be a commercial aspect of medicine, whereas the single snake entwining the rod of Asclepius is considered the proper, true, honest ethical medicine with no commercial uh, ideologies and no commercial uh, outlooks and no commercial needs. If the primary aim of the rod of Asclepius with that single snake, the snake of life and the snake of uh, affection and affection would generally be the way medicine should be practiced. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't think the screen is getting shared. The presentation is not at all shared. I don't know. Wait. It's not been shared till now? It's not been shared till now. Shit. I don't know how to go about it now. Where am I? I really don't know. I hope one of these uh, guys who are organizing can. There is an option share screen. Okay. Present screen. Present screen. If uh, you click your. Okay. And uh, where is it? I think we are going in the beginning. So. Down you can find present screen. If you click on present screen, then you will be able to present your screen. Okay. Ah, yes, sir. It's we correct. Got it, no? And uh, yes, yeah. all those things I was speaking about the single rod and the single snake. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope it makes a little bit more meaning now. Should I go back yes, to sir. the or shall I continue from here? A continue, sir, no issue. Now, I'm talking of history, Silapadigaram, a Tamil epic of the 7th century, there is a description in it about. Drama therapy. It's actually a dance dumb drama therapy. The central character Kanagi is waiting for her husband to come back, not knowing he's dead already. And she is very distraught. She's very anxious, worried, and uh, scared of what is going to happen, not even eating, going in for a depression. When there is a dance drama happening in the street, all the participants, as well as the people in the street, pull her on and into the street and into the play and make her forget that moment of sadness, that moment of fear. This is a transitory phenomenon. I mean, just because she participated in a small dance drama there, it didn't mean that she came out of her fear and anxiousness and worries. It was a brief respite. So drama per se can give you a brief respite. Drama therapy can make you go a little further and uh, make yourself extend that respite for a longer time and uh, strangely there is no mention of use of theatrical aspects and theatrical performance and drama for therapy in Natya Sastra. It mentions various emotions, how to move, how to stand, how to dress up and everything but it doesn't mention about how to do it for a therapeutic purpose. And Tolkapiyam, a Tamil classic, which also deals with emotions and various aspects of body language, does not mention about the therapeutic aspect of drama and therapy. Now, it doesn't mean that they were not aware of it. It is just that it did not uh, matter much to talk about it because it was happening in a natural way and it did not get documented. There have been plays in history all along which have uh, made an impact on the literature of psychology. Uh, Marcus Dissart wrote a drama for the inmates in the prison and Gade wrote a play in which he offered a solution for a depressed member of the Duke's family. Of course, Oedipus Rex, Sophocles, great Greek tragedy which made Freud, uh, Sigmund Freud, think a lot about and come up with this Oedipus Rex, which is still uh, misunderstood and misquoted. Then there was Moreno, who introduced this theater of spontaneity and the living newspaper. Moreno's living newspaper was a very useful social phenomena during the World War I. We will talk about Moreno and psychodrama a little later. 
But right now, I would like to focus on another aspect of drama, the drama in healing in the community. And this has been there for ages. I am talking of the drama and therapeutic aspects of rituals. We have all seen rituals being performed in various ways. I am not talking of the commercial rituals uh, which are done in the pretext of bringing rain or uh, chasing away an illness. I am talking of rituals which have been practiced all along without getting uh, contaminated by commercial uh, ideas. These rituals were meant to give solace to the community. This is not to uh, say that uh, rituals are the only and ideal way to handle psychological crisis. Rituals have been there and we have to understand how they have contributed in a dramatic way, in a theatrical way to alleviate the suffering of people. Now, the Greek, Egyptian and Indian civilizations of yester ages were aware of the socio-therapeutic use of drama. It was inculcated in their sociocultural growth. The early function of drama was to provide a means for an individual to become engaged in a group experience, whether it is sorrow over death or defeat or joy over victory or a happy event. We still see dramatic uh, expressions and dramatic uh, manifestations, or physical manifestations in severe sorrow and, so and extreme joy in our community every day in every corner of our country. Now, culturally sanctioned witchcraft and devil driving uh, in Tamil Nadu, the payout or the Samya or this sort of things became a part of life and is still a part of life. It is so much a part of life that a uh, lot of people with uh, psychiatric illnesses still go to these um, pseudo magicians or uh, like devil drivers or those who can drive away possessions because it is a socio culturally accepted norm. But this is actually a therapeutic drama in action. Uh, in the West, people generally term all these things under shamanism. And uh, Charles said the shaman's chief function in exorcism was psychotherapeutic and the method was dramatic. We all can see the dramatic uh, way it is being done. Here we demonstrated how shaman's therapeutic uh, enactment is the beginning of a uh, role playing. And uh, it was further elaborated and uh, much more clearly defined by Grotowski. I'll come to that later. But Snow said that the healing of the sick is a performance. This includes an impressive setting, lighting, costume, makeup, some props, sound effects. Like the room should be uh, given a divine feel. The lighting should be, uh, again, divine with a D lamp or an oil lamp. And the costume should be colorful and appropriate. Makeup with extra ashes or kum kum on the face, then the props of some figures of gods or idols, then the sound effects of a particular Tamil Nadu, Udukai, the possession of our battle of the affected with the shaman is a frenzy. It's a supreme example of dramatic improvisation. There is elaborate use of voice, dialogue and body pantomime. Actually, this shamanism in the early stages did not evolve around the healing of individuals. It was a catharsis for communities. It was a different drama enacted in which they could participate with faith and fear. This fear was about existence. This faith was the hope that something is bound to happen the very next moment. So, the shaman is a stimulator of the collective imagination. He makes sense of experience and puts into perspective the complexities of this community. But not all do it now. This was how it all originally started. But this is the contemporary role of the artist today. 
we have to use the collective imagination people make sense of their experience and produce the place that would put perspective into their life's complexities now uh, i was talk of grotowski grotowski was a person who actually studied a lot of uh, theater activities and drama activities uh, in india too he was extremely impressed with uh, kadakali in kerala and tirukottu in tamil nadu and uh, let me quote him uh, grotowski says traditional actors in bali even today believe that when they enter trance states spiritual beings are able to descend to earth and live through the actor's body for the duration of the performance people watching the actors see them not as actors but as the actual spirits the spiritual beings portrayed by the actors have particular personalities and they are like stock characters like we have our kali like we have our ravana and like we have our krishna or shiva all these stock characters are already etched as an outline in the people's mind it is the performance which makes it more vivid and brings it out in front of them so that the identification and understanding and experience becomes a little more vivid the traditional actor state of possession which happens at times is it alters the actor's behavior and people start believing and even the actor starts believing sometimes that the spirit has come out of him and this performance is bodily performance this uh, physical performance in theater would be so intense and convincing that people would really believe that for a moment the god or goddess has come on with him but it is still the performance this can be called a controlled possession a traditional actor has double consciousness one part is possessed almost stannis lost him for a very brief period of time where he becomes the character he absorbs the role and he exhibits the role and at the same time he is able to detach in a brechtian way and observe and control his actions he knows at what point he has to stop that behavior and get back into a routine performance the ancient people just did not sit and watch the rituals of performances they participated in them this participation made them at one point become one with the happening there and at the same time a little alienated from whatever was happening there the ancient theaters of uh, india greece and japan were not a presentation of reality it was a dancing of reality according to grotowski it was a celebration and according to grotowski the theater artists the performers did not demonstrate to the viewer they invited the viewer to take part in it in which the living immediate presence of the viewer the very watching becomes a part of the acting same thing you can see in our own um, uh, tamil nadu therukut therukut is a folk dance drama form There are instances where the characters are made to speak lines from the socio-cultural time of the society, which serves not only to alienate and give relief from the charged atmosphere, but also make the artist step out of their mythological role and take respite in reality. Now, generally, we take respite in fantasy and in imagination. but when an artist who is so deeply engrossed and uh, so intensely performing a mythological role comes so stressed out a brief respite in which the respite is in reality now they would be adlibbing about uh, social and political problems of that particular village or that particular community and the crowd would uh, move away from the intense uh, scene and start laughing or enjoying it in a mildly different way these which these are rituals then there are rituals rituals are performed at the beginning and the end of the performance that practice is still there even now in film productions to start with the puja and end with the puja that is not the thing but 
just before the scene of an immense dramatic impact where the main character is going to slaughter let's say narasimha is going to tear open the abdomen of uh, hiranyakashipu if somebody is performing that particular role in that particular scene before the scene there will be a small ritual and after the scene there would be another ritual to calm down the character and this serves to alienate the audience at the same time constantly reminding them that what is enacted out there is not real it also reemphasizes that violence portrayed is only incidental to the society and because of all the rituals and the sacrifices and all the other offerings to the god it is also sanctioned socially but beyond all this uh, all these ritualistic uh, theatrical and dramatic performances have their own meaning but they have not been studied but aristotle was the first to approach drama objectively and interpret he believed that tragedy affected the spectator by producing both pity and fear he also believed it eventually led to catharsis the purging of emotions it is happening even now you watch a very well made film in which uh, very good performances are there you start projecting your own life onto the scene there you start identifying with one of the characters and though you may not actively purge out your emotions there would be an internal catharsis and you would feel a bit of relief a sigh or a small tear glistening in the corner of your eye this is the basis of drama therapy because here the spectator will watch upon the aristotle the unfolding of human conflict in the drama and he would identify with it and he would ventilate at the moment without any ego disturbance because he is a spectator there have been many attempts even before 1970s 70s was the time when uh, drama therapy became uh, actually formal and serious uh, there was a creative drama in an educational setting in the beginning where it was more a playful interaction and uh, theater games and improvisation with children psycho theatrics was a action oriented program it focused on uh, individuals more than a group but it had many factors in common with psycho drama psycho drama is a word that keeps popping up now and then i will be talking a little bit more on that later remedial drama which was the original name sue jennings a pioneer in drama therapy gave for her sessions emphasized on experience its goals were socialization creativity and insight promotion it so happened till uh, mid and late 1970s any one who experimented with drama in a non theatrical use came out with their own name for the same till the 1970s in 1970s you had sue jennings in uk and david johnson in the usa they are the pioneers of what we have as drama therapy now their constant work persistent effort and rigorous campaigning about the use and effectiveness of drama as a therapy brought about an accreditation in these two countries and it is david johnson and sue jennings which we have to be primarily uh, indebted for a long time and robert landy's books on drama therapy are a beautiful uh, textbooks which anyone interested should have read at least once i added reni amuna here because i attended reni's workshop in uh, 1988 and uh, she had conducted a workshop on how to do with uh, drama therapy with the chronic schizophrenia patients because that was my area of interest and i had done something similar a couple of years before i had even uh, gone and attended the workshop so let me come to the history of drama therapy in india drama therapy in india started in 1986 i was in charge of a rehabilitation unit where people with chronic schizophrenia 
with negative symptoms, negative symptoms were primarily elogia. Uh, they will not be able to speak properly. Not that they cannot speak, but they don't want to speak. They don't want to communicate. Then anhedonia, no interest in doing anything whatsoever. Then attentional deficit. And they were all clustered together in a group of negative symptoms. They were doing nothing, talking nothing, just being. And in 86, when I started this, we did not have proper medicines to handle that also. It has all changed now. Now we have proper medication which can uh, prevent these uh, negative symptoms developing into a chronic state. When I found uh, them doing nothing, just idling in the afternoon, I collected a bunch of them and uh, started doing some small theater exercises and said, let's do a small play and stuff like that. And it, uh, gradually snowballed into a therapeutic session and then we worked out what exactly is happening and how to formulate it. That was the first attempt to study the effect of drama in the mental area. It was a short term uh, therapy program of uh, three months and like everyone who were not aware of the term drama therapy, I called it therapeutic dramatics. Everyone had their own funny name for it. But now, all therapists who use drama or theater techniques in therapy call their discipline drama therapy. That is the official term now. And this term has been in use since 1970s. Drama therapy is distinct from psychodrama. A lot of people even now mistake drama therapy as a form of psychodrama. They are totally different. Now, let me talk about psychodrama so that you can understand what drama therapy is. Psychodrama is that form of psychotherapy in which the personality makeup, interpersonal relationships, conflicts, emotional problems are explored in a dramatic method. In World War I, Austrian and German dramatists resorted to theatre for awakening and educating the public. Moreno was able to get some news about what actually was happening in the war front. And since there was a newspaper ban and news was heavily censored, he collected a group of uh, friends and enacted what was happening on the war front on the streets. So the news was enacted and presented to the public. He called this a living newspaper technique, he also called it socio-drama. And he found that the audience who were witnessing this drama or the news in the form of drama became intensely emotional. He, he found joy in them at the smallest victory. He found despair at the setbacks. And he found severe depression when their own country was losing, even in the drama. So this led him to formulate a psychotherapy program, which he called psychodrama. This psychodrama was very, very popular. Even now there are people practicing psychodrama. Now in psychodrama, if you can see the picture, this is how the setting would be. Uh, there would be a group of people, perhaps with similar problems or some of them with no problems. And the one with the problem would be called over to the center and he would start uh, talking about his problems. The patient is called the protagonist. He acts out situations and reactions to relationships that are disturbing to him. The therapist is the director. He would be directing, he would say, okay, you can um, use this scene, you can uh, modify this expression, you can say a little more here, or you need not say so much here and stuff like that. Now, if the actual person's involved in the situation, let's say the husband is there as a protagonist and the wife is sitting in the audience, she can join the group and act out along with the protagonist and the group members would take up the necessary roles to facilitate or direct. You can see it can be done this way, this can be said this way and stuff like that. So role taking, role playing, and role creating are referred to as methods of acting out in psychodrama. There are three factors. Psychodrama per se is the actual session. 
sociometry where the analysis of the actions and the emotions and the expressions are formed by a group of experts and then there's a group therapy in which persons who have the problem and don't have the problem all participate to find a comfortable solution their action takes place and activity is vital to the process use of soliloquy was important in psychodrama it was called associative ideation in uh, greek plays and even in some of the shakespearean plays you can see the chorus which would be describing the event or whatever is happening inside the character's mind to the audience the chorus is reduced to the form of the confidant another uh, person in the psychodrama group there would be sometimes another person is acting as a alter ego or a auxiliary ego of the protagonist this would relieve the patient a little bit of his alien anxiety and uh, provide a little bit of alienation and it would help a little bit in loneliness but in psychodrama the patient or the protagonist as they call him would always be exposed whatever is going on in his mind and whatever is happening in his life he would be making it public to the group and it doesn't really matter how close the group is he would have to do it with which the session would not move on now the psychodrama is so much an extension of dramatics so much an extension of theater and with a psychotherapeutic perspective why drama therapy why another one those not acquainted with the theory and technique of psychodrama consider drama therapy as a synonym drama therapy is different it's comprehensive and effective the main difference between the two is ego syntonic versus ego dystonic now uh, forgetting all that jargon you have a problem and you are sitting in a group how much would you expose yourself if i am going to sit in a group and say uh, i am rudran i am having financial problems i wouldn't have much difficulty in saying that if i'm going to sit in a group and say i am rudran i'm having a major problem in my family i have a marital crisis that would be difficult for me to express to them i may be able to give a sentence about it but not a paragraph because i feel i should not be exposed no one likes to be exposed in psychodrama you have to expose yourself bare yourself and only then you can be cleansed not so in drama therapy because here you do not have to expose yourself to get a therapeutic benefit drama therapy is based on two fundamental hypotheses one there's a relationship between the art of healing and the nature of art this we have seen already right from the rituals to the greek tragic uh, tragedy performances producing catharsis and second to enactment and reenactment man is not only capable of personal growth and change he can continually maintain his social and individual identity i will not lose my identity and self as rudran but i may become a better communicator or can handle my emotional outbursts or expressions in a much better way it cannot happen with one session it is enactment in the session and reenactment in life drama therapy is not a collection of a set of tools it is a process it is assisted by various techniques so the definition is it is the intentional use of creative drama towards psychotherapeutic goals of symptom relief emotional and personal integration and personal growth when you talk of intentional use of creative drama creativity is the technical aspect of the drama actually any act or any stimulus that helps in the production of a personally a socially relevant and aesthetically acceptable result can be called creative whether it's a painting or a poem or a performance 
the key phrase that establishes drama therapy processes it is primarily therapeutic in some settings drama therapy techniques can be used to create social awareness so the objectives of drama therapy are one increase social interaction that is improve your communication skills two facilitate the release and control of emotions learn to control your emotions exaggerate if needed and suppress when required then changing non constructive behavior and role patterns we assume a lot of roles in life and we assume that this is the way we should be behaving if it is non constructive it is obstructing your life and growth it has to be changed and gradually drama therapy would help you to develop spontaneity which is essential to go through the various conflicts and problems one can face in everyday life it develops imagination it develops concentration all these together will bolster the self esteem of the individual and make him a more confident person the techniques that are useful in drama therapy are all from the dramatic arts we use a play we use improvisation we use storytelling and dramatization of the story and then performance choosing an appropriate technique will depend on the primary purpose and value of the technique it also depends on the ability and perspective of the therapist above all it is dependent on the needs of the group and the capacity of the group there are different dimensions of drama which a drama therapist has to keep in mind one is the drama of everyday life we are all playing roles one main role and many auxiliary roles and every role is engaged in a dramatic interaction this is the drama of everyday life of every moment in life then there is the drama that is larger than life this is what a theatrical or a cinematic production produces and gives to the audience the drama that is larger than life contrasts with the previous dimension of everyday drama it is an exaggeration of aesthetics for a performance this exaggeration is needed in a way to create a bigger impact and also to alienate the audience a little so that they do not totally get involved and become cathartic the drama that is internal to life is intimate this is the drama that we don't show outside this is the drama about which we don't speak to anyone it is also the drama of our dreams and subconscious all these three dimensions of drama are not mutually exclusive from the drama of everyday life the drama that is larger than life would become a beautiful performance the drama that is internal to life will produce the drama of everyday life and as you perform more and see more and understand more the drama that is larger than life the drama that is internal to life would become more polished and refined there are different uh, drama therapy models one is the creative expressive model here the emphasis is on healing nature the focus is on the experience of drama than on analysis it believes almost like a ritual where you just participate and you feel better then there is a learning model in which the emphasis is on learning mostly we can use it for kids this is task oriented the goals are specific targeted at improving the drama of everyday life then there is a therapeutic model in which enactment and exercises are used along with counseling sessions in a close group setting the focus is on the material that has been repressed but is coming out gradually and it is not made public so that there is no disturbance or the hurt or injury to the ego of the individual it should be happening in the individual session i'll go into the various forms of it thank you now this is not philosophy this is a putra mantra self is what a person is you know what you are the role is what a person does you all know what you are doing are you doing what you know as yourself always sometimes or never this is a question you can ask in solitude 
and get an answer. But make that answer relevant in everyday life when to produce sufficient actions, whether it is communication or some other performance, you need a session of drama therapy. In drama therapy, identification is an internal drama. It's an action, it's not imitation. And projection, where you project your life or your story or your feelings are onto something else. It's an imaginative cue from memory. It is not exactly what is happening out there. You just pick up a cue and you try to go over, write on it and then overlay and see through it. In drama therapy, distancing is important. In life too, distancing is important. When you over distance from something, you start avoiding it. When you under distance something, you become dependent on it. So life primarily is about balancing. And if you learn distancing the drama therapy, you can learn about balancing in life also. Cathartic insight is essential for functioning in life. Your emotions are purged, but not in a public platform. And insight you learn. The most important aspect of drama therapy would be the diagnostic and therapeutic decisions which would be taken later in post sessions by trained professionals. So catharsis, projection and insight are the key words in drama therapy. Affective memory, yes, it's Stanislaus here, where you take cues from your life and project onto the performance and distancing. These are the key terms and phenomena of drama therapy. This is how a typical session would go. Initially, there would be a group sitting where we would be explaining what exactly is going to happen. Then we get into some simple exercises to bring the group into focus, like clapping into a rhythm or even group singing if the group is okay with it. Then there are trust exercises like limitation and falling back, totally trusting the other person. Then the group would sit in a circle and a story would be formed. Now, for example, uh, I would start saying there was a man. Then the next person says uh, he was tall. The third one says he likes potatoes and so on and so forth. Then when the thing is going a bit uh, out of control, uh, people are trying to have more fun and then purposeful uh, contribution to the play session, the director or the therapist can intervene and say, okay, let us talk about what this guy likes. Who is his friend? How does he interact with his friends? And thereby each one would be contributing one sentence about that central character. Now, all of them are projecting themselves onto the character. That character, that central character is a part of everyone there and everyone can identify with the character because they have projected a part of themselves onto the character. Now, the group would be split into various smaller groups and each one would be assigned a task here this guy is in the office here this guy is at home here he is with friends let us see how he behaves and as those performances are, are enacted and the group also the entire group of six or seven the smaller group they would start directing on you can do this actually you can uh, give this dialogue actually you should not do this that sort of thing and it becomes a intra-therapeutic session and finally the entire group is made to understand that it is their character and they are seeing themselves and they should reflect on how much they are with the character and doing what is right and not doing what is right and that would have to be explored further in individual sessions. Now the same techniques and the same sequence need not apply to all types of clients. Drama therapy is diagnostic in projective elements, but it's therapeutic in the reality orientation. The client will learn that to act is to do, act is to do, but to do well, without conflicts, with integrity, and due social obligations. This future acting will be semi-voluntary and purposeful but not for deceit or dubious purposes. At the end of the program, the client should be 
able to understand how another good thing can act in their place. To be able to perceive situations and predict a course of action. Able to learn that to act is to involve, constantly being aware of this involvement and becoming while being themselves. The ability to assume the socially sanctioned which is important, accepted, socially accepted, socially expected and socially needed role without losing identity. The client should be able to identify and accept emotional reactions in others. At the same time, being in touch with their own emotional state. They should be able to perceive a traumatic event that occurs in their life as an external action. This little bit of distancing and detachment should become a part of it because their spontaneity would help them to handle crisis situations. Constantly practicing what has been learned would help in improving your social skills. Now, there are, there are drama therapy for various specific groups. In schizophrenia, it is not a treatment per se. It is an adjunct in the rehabilitation program. In, the focus is on improving the communication skills. In depression, the accent would not, would have to be on physically stimulating exercises and not focus on introspection because that would only worsen the depressive state. Later stages can be used for insight promotion. In a group of um, anxiety or panic or other so-called neurosis, the same format will be helpful, but uh, you can add on some behavioral modification techniques. In a group of alcoholics and drug abuse clients, physical activity can be minimized and the focus can be on analytical sections. Marital therapy I have not done, uh, but it is possible in a smaller group. The initial sessions would be sensitive, compliance would be difficult, rapport very, very difficult, but can be achieved with persistence. The group will have to be individually prepared for the sessions in the sense they would be exposing themselves. The sessions will have to be more projective, but I haven't done it, so I can't really say how it would go. Stress management can be done on two full days with four sessions with intervals, and uh, the group will have to be filtered. It has to be a uh, group in which all the participants are similar. You can't have somebody uh, from, well, you have to filter them for the socio-economic, uh, academic, age, and other factors. Only, only then it, it will work. In the same time frame can be used for only clinical drama. Now, I finish with uh, Sue Jennings, the pioneer in drama therapy. She spoke of two realities, everyday reality, in dramatic reality. The role of the drama therapist is to assist the passage, transit from everyday reality to dramatic reality and then bring the person back. Then the question comes, does a role come into me or do I go into a role? It's not just a philosophical question. If you start observing your actions and you start thinking why you're doing it, you can do a drama therapy on yourself individually in solitude. It's a question of whether one allows a role to inhabit the self or whether one goes into and comes out of a role easily according to the situation. But remember, every session has an end. There's a curtain hanging above for any show. And as the curtain comes down in a drama therapy session, whether you're conducting or participating, you remember in life, if you're using drama therapy techniques, the important thing is to distance, detach, and don another role readily and easily. So, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, almost one hour so you have shared your experience uh, with us. So, friends, please uh, drop your questions on chat box. So we have few questions, sir. So yes, sir. I will ask uh, for you. Yeah. And uh, Shobana, uh, she is uh, asking, uh, when we select a character in the group, do we need to take with relevance to the group? 
No. If yes, then we need to know some basics of the group. Accordingly, the group should be formed. See, when you are doing in a stress management sort of thing in a corporate setting or in a college setting, to some extent you can control who is coming into the group and what sort of a group you have. But if you are dealing with patients, you cannot be that strict in filtering. But if the central character in a storytelling technique can be decided by the therapist, and that character is actually formed by the entire group, the therapist would be interfering on and off to push that group to make that character a little, little more relevant to their life situation. It can be any character, it can be any story. But more importantly, the story would be formed with the group unless the therapist deliberately pushes it into a mythological section or a historical section or a current social setting. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. There is uh, another question from Chetna. Uh, with such deep and rich culture of theatre and its therapeutic efforts, wondering why we do not have universities in India teaching applied theatre and drama therapy. I don't know. See, uh, it, can be taught, it can be taught as a part of uh, psychology and social work courses. It can be uh, made compulsory in uh, diploma in psychiatry and uh, MD in psychiatry. Uh, it doesn't happen. That's all. In fact, in MBBS, you don't study psychiatry, which is a big tragic event, right? So after somebody becomes a specialist in cardiology or uh, even oncology, they do not know much about psychiatry, which is very tragic. The same thing happens to everyone, any field. Okay, okay, sir. Thanks, sir. And another question from uh, Swadesh. Does, uh, does trauma therapy will help in aiding psychosomatic problems? No, very difficult. Psychosomatic problems uh, will be dominating the individual so much, they would be preoccupied with it all the time. They will not be able to shift their attention from their uh, imaginary physical problems into something else. In fact, psychosomatic problems uh, make the person uh, not seek treatment but seek attention more. So the, they need attention on their symptoms rather than treatment to alleviate the symptoms. That is the problem in Okay, sir. Thank you so much. And another question from Upendra. Uh, when working with schizophrenia rehabilitation in Fun Fellowship Society, Bangalore, I noticed blunt emotion. So design activities connected to expression face, body, emotion, in face, individual and groups as well. Your opinion, sir? Blunting is a common component of schizophrenia. It was described even by Euler in the beginning. Now, this blunting is a symptom. This is a primary negative symptom. Affective flattening, it is called. You cannot show any mood. You cannot experience any mood. And you cannot understand any mood. That is the flat, blunt effect, blunt mood. Now, for them, you don't start off uh, a storytelling technique in the beginning itself. Let it be a forced, playful session. Let them clap, let them sing, let them form groups, and do group activities, which are not directly going to get into a drama therapy mode in the beginning. You need about five or six sessions when the group becomes a little comfortable with each other, and they do not have to be very expressive when they clap to a rhythm. And you have to keep changing the rhythm. And gradually they start focusing on that rhythm. And then uh, deliberately the therapist can say, hey, you did well. And uh, deliberately you can say, you did not do this right. And even if the person is doing right, and start extracting emotions from them. After a little bit, maybe about eight or nine sessions, you start seeing mild flickers of emotion in their blunted effect and that is the time when you push them into the storytelling stuff and this but if a person is having elogia that is a person does not speak at all which is another negative symptom uh, you have to force him into talking you can push him into uh, forcibly singing in the group or forcibly repeating uh, you uh, recite a poem and ask him to repeat it thereby make him vocalize deliberately and move him into the therapy session a little later. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And there is a question from Kasuni Munyanti. How do you measure the outcomes or improvements in drama therapy interventions? That, that depends on the group. 
if it is a group of chronic uh, schizophrenia patients, then you have definite scales. There is one scale developed to uh, measure the outcome in patients with negative symptoms. Uh, if it is anxiety, you can do the rating scales in the beginning and end. And if it is marital therapy, I don't know. I haven't come across any uh, scales on that. But there are rating scales which you can give in the beginning and end to see whether it has come down. But it doesn't end there. You have to do a follow up a month later to see whether that reduction in anxiety or depression is sustained or is waning off. I don't know. You have to. It depends on the group. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, there is a question from Ajit Kamar. Can drama therapy be used with kids? If yes, uh, how in can be covered? You can start uh, drama therapy from age 7 or 8 when uh, their fantasies would be very fertile. And the story you can start about even the characters which they are familiar with. Uh, let us say Batman is coming down here now and uh, in, uh, he is in Chennai now or he is in Delhi now. Let us see what he does. Where would he go? And start off there and bring out the fantasies in the kids. It would be a little more easier with the kids. But then what uh, you thank you, sir. Kids, it also depends on what you're trying to teach the kids. Are you trying to teach them uh, uh, social skills or etiquette or what? You, uh, okay. For kids who have no disabilities. If there are disabilities, the focus should be on the disability rather than uh, fantasy building. Okay, sir. And uh, there is a question from Srinivas, sir. Are there training workshops for drama therapy if I wanted to be trained? Not to my knowledge. The okay. one I conducted was four years back. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Rudran, for this wonderful session. So there are many uh, comments came, like uh, you, you explained very simple terms. So it is a compli complicated subject, but uh, you explained very simple terms and we, we could understand very uh, easily. So thank you for, so much for this wonderful session. And uh, so before finishing, if you want to share any few words, so please do, sir. Uh, I just want to um, communicate with me. Maybe you can use, you can write to me. And uh, when you write to me, you mention that uh, in the subject, it's about drama therapy, so that uh, I will not be just sending it away to spam. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. And uh, we say thanks and appreciate uh, all the organizers of this event. The 5W Theatre Group, Adavu, Virmai, Nadagakulu, Stai, KPR College and Kaleidoscope. So from uh, all these uh, organizations, we say thanks to uh, Dr. Rudran and uh, all the wonderful participants. So uh, thanks again. And we meet tomorrow at 10 o'clock with a different personality and with a different topic. So tomorrow will be there.